Awesome. Hello and welcome, everybody. Can everybody hear me? It's so awesome. Look at all those thumbs up. Such an awesome day. We're fired up to have you all here. Um, I am going to start by just um, passing the mic to Paige, Paige Nichols. So Paige, I'm going to get out of the way so you can kick this off and get the party started. Great. Thank you, Nick. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Paige Nichols. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer at the Maine Department of Education. Thank you all for joining us. Um, welcome to the public reveal event for our latest round of Rev Innovative Awards. 12 district teams have created responsive, innovative ideas for meeting the educational needs of their students. I wanted to also provide a little context to the Rev Grant. In August of 2020, the Maine Department of Education was awarded $16.9 million from the US Department of Education's Rethink K-12 Education Model Funding. Maine was one of 11 states to receive funding. Maine's project, Rethinking Remote or Responsive Education Ventures, REV, offers a multi-pronged approach with a primary goal of generating innovative remote learning models to provide equitable access to high quality remote learning opportunities for all students. Prior to today, REV has awarded almost $6 million to 27 different pilot ideas in 24 different districts throughout the state. The distribution of total awarded funds breaks down into the four REV categories of extended learning at $1 million, multiple pathways at $1.5 million, online learning at $1 million, and outdoor education models at $2.5 million. Today's 12 new awards total over $1.6 million and brings our awardee count to 39 school districts. Just over 1 million of today's awarded funds will go toward outdoor education, 100,000 will go toward online learning, and 500,000 will go to multiple pathways. I'm gonna get out of the way so that we can get to the good stuff and hear from, from the 12 different awardees. Um, I just wanna say a huge thank you to all the folks that have been involved in making this happen, and especially to the, the folks here from our 12 different school districts who have put in a ton of time and energy into putting together um, what they're going to share with you today. So thank you all, I'll pass it back to you, Nick. Thank you, Paige. And awardees, just give us a few more minutes before we dive into announcing you all. We have a, a very special guest with us today. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, someone from our first year, from our first uh, round awardees, um, Mickey Flores. So before we hear from all of you, we'd like to introduce Mickey to you um, as, as one of our first round awardees. She's here to give us an update on the impact of working with the Rev Award, as well as provide a little advice to all of you as newest awardees. So Mickey, I'm gonna pass the mic to you now and welcome. All right, thank you so much. And thank you to Rev because as a recipient of that round one pilot project, we were able to complete our nature trail. We have three tenths of a mile, handicapped accessible, two outdoor classrooms and you can find us on main trail finders. We are so official. Um, and between when I took the course and we were awarded the grant, I, I myself won the presidential award uh, for excellence in math and science teaching. And I know that a great part of my application was based on what I was doing um, outdoors. My advice to the new recipients is remember that you can teach anything outside. I am a science educator, but my elementary school goes outside on that nature trail in those outdoor classrooms every single day, every single child. And as an example, the kindergarten created this hardcover book. I spy the nature trail from A to Z, lots of beautiful pictures, but of course you're gonna recognize what a maple tree looks like. Yes, huh? red maple tree, I spy. And the kindergarten teacher said, those 17 steps leading off the trail to the playground 
Could you number them, please? Because the children count them every day. So um, I 3D printed letters and, we, and the high school students of, and numbers and the, uh, the alphabet and the numbers and the high school students put the numbers on the steps. And the first time I heard the first grade going up the steps, they were counting, but before they counted, the first number that they encountered on the boardwalk totally puzzled them. They said, what, what number is that? And it was zero. <laughs> So they're practicing their alphabet and they're practicing their counting. Uh, I've done a lot of science outside, of course. I've done soil temperature and, and skunk cabbage. We've monitored bird activities on sunny days and cloudy days. But the seventh and eighth grade also took pictures that they worked on their photography skills and they took pictures of the nature trail and they sell a calendar in December that helps, um, it helps their class projects. And we have the kids' words on there, their quotations about what it's like to be outdoors and how it's so more authentic and how they love it out there. I'm sure that uh, Nick and Paige will share my contact information. I'm very, very happy to help I have uh, about a bazillion lesson plans <laughs> and they're not all science. So congratulations, you are just embarking on the best adventure ever. Thank you. Thank you, Mickey. Every time we meet on Teams or Zoom or wherever, I always have, you can teach anything outside ringing in my head. That's, that's awesome and inspirational. Um, and curious where we can get calendars. Maybe we can connect afterwards, get some of those awesome calendars. They're very, very cool. Um, so thank you very much. So now the moment we've all been waiting for, the reason you are all here, uh, before my excitement gets the best of me and I just dive right in, I wanna share a bit of the structure, what you can expect uh, that we'll be using for each announcement and just two quick housekeeping reminders um, and requests. Elaine had already put it in the chat, um, but I'm gonna touch on them again as well. But so for each awardee, I'll start by reading an expert excerpt um, from the abstract that they provided uh, describing the Rev pilot idea. It could be a quick snapshot. Um, and then I will pass the mic to the Rev uh, pilot team representative or representatives. I see a whole bunch of people join us today, which is fabulous. Um, and then they'll take it away. Uh, like the Oscars, we've asked that each speaker craft their remarks into a one-ish minute moment uh, to honor the time that we have together and to celebrate everyone. Unlike the Oscars, I don't have dramatic theme music, which will cue you in that you're getting close to that music, that time. Um, but I did just watch uh, the new Elvis movie and I can blast Blue Suede Shoes if anybody needs that as a reminder, but hopefully it doesn't come to that. But we're excited to hear you in that one-ish minute moment. Um, as far as the housekeeping requests, we ask that if you're not speaking, just please keep yourself muted. And that um, if you are speaking, and all of you, I see so many cameras on right now, um, but if you are speaking, if you can turn your camera on to, uh, so we can celebrate the moment with you on camera. So thank you. Um, so here we go, Let, let's get it started. Um, so our first awardee for today um, in the category of outdoor education is RSU 35, Marshwood Great Work School. So give it up for Marshwood. Uh, here, woo, I love it. Uh, so here is their uh, the excerpt from their from their abstract. So Great Works Ventures Outdoors reflects their school's shared belief that authentic outdoor learning experiences can provide essential growth opportunities for every student. In the last few years, MGWS has taken small steps to support nature-based learning initiatives. Our REV project, however, has the potential to shift this belief into everyday practice. This innovation seeks to support the social, emotional development and well being of students. So, with that, I am going to pass it to Wendy Shaw from RSU 35 to hear more. Awesome. Well, first of all, I wanted to share with all of you out there the inspiration for our team are really standing behind us. This is one of our Woodland and Wonders class. Give a great shout out and wave. 
And what do you guys have to say? One, two, three. Stadium! All right. All right. So that's really why we're here. My name is Wendy Shaw. I collaborated with Sarah Alice and our principal, um, Jerry Burnell, in designing this REV grant. We call it Great Works Ventures Outdoors. We really identified three essential things that we saw that our students needed. First, we needed to increase our student engagement. The other piece that we needed to focus on is how we support our social emotional health of our kids. And also we identified the need to support our eco literacy of our skills. So we based all of our decisions about what infrastructure we needed, what activities we wanted to do, and the community partnerships that we wanted to establish based on these specific targets. And some of the things we're doing to get kids engaged and that have a sense of belonging is working with the Brown Center at UNH and putting some low ropes course elements here on campus um, to work on the social development, social, social emotional development of our students. We're building a meditation garden and working with an artist in residency to design that with our kids and to build our eco literacy. We're expanding our Woodland and Wonder um, to not just be here on campus, but to get out into our um, Great Works Regional Land Trust and work with the Gulf of Maine Research Institute. So kids are out and about in New York County and um, doing community science. So we've already started some of those trips and it's been great. The kids are excited, teachers are excited, and we really appreciate the REV team for all of your support and help along the way, because this is just, it's awesome. And we can't wait to see what's gonna happen this year. I have goosebumps upon goosebumps from that stuff. What a way to kick us off. Thank you so much. It was awesome to see your students here uh, as well. And I think tenacity is a word that applies to every team on here. I think when I think of your team, I think of the tenacity to finalize that pilot craft and uh, you can have it all. You can have it all. That was something that was one of the questions as we were going through. So thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, I'm going to move us next to RSU 34, Old Town Middle High School, under the category of online education. So I am going to pass it over to Bethany Garish. Hi, everyone. Um, John Doty and I partnered together with um, to, to do this grant as well. And RSU 34 is so excited to have been awarded these funds. Uh, it's gonna allow us the opportunity to offer a full remote or hybrid option for our students that can thrive in an alternate um, or independent learning environment. Our students will have access to a remote teacher and case manager, uh, along with our amazing in-person instructors and our online resources and courses. We're now able to tailor a pathway for our students to succeed outside the traditional walls of our schools. Um, the Coyote Online Opportunity students will also have access to all co-curricular activities um, at the school to continue their passions outside the traditional academic courses. We believe that co-op isn't just a benefit for our students, but also for our district as well. Um, we believe it will help keep our students in district who may have otherwise left to go to other online education opportunities. Um, allowing our students to learn in an environment that's best suited for their needs, uh, along with keeping them engaged socially with their peers is a win-win. And we're very excited to begin this adventure. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Bethany. And Bethany, I get so excited about this. I forgot to read the blurb about Old Town, but we can make sure that gets the book. You did such a fabulous job. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, so we'll move on to the next school, which is RSU 73, Spruce Mountain Elementary in the category of outdoor ed. And here's their, the portion of their abstract. So at Spruce Mountain Elementary School, we aim to be a community-centered place of learning that values and inspires all learners. With students in grades three through five, Spruce Mountain Elementary is nestled in the Western foothills, a part of Maine with a long tradition of economic and recreational ties to nature. Our goal is to create a greenhouse classroom for all students to use, a library of standards-based individual lesson and unit plans, and longer-term projects that allow teachers to engage in outdoor learning at multiple points on a continuum. So I would love to pass the mic to Sarah Dyer um, and RSD73. 
Thank you, Nick. Um, so um, my name is Sarah Dyer. I'm a fourth grade teacher at Spruce Mountain Elementary School. And our development team consisted of myself, Tammy Daring, also a fourth grade teacher, Jen Stone, our school social worker, and our principal, Patrick St. Clair. Um, the fourth grade team at Spruce Mountain has been participating in an outdoor education program informally for several years. Um, and we consistently saw um, high engagement levels in those activities among our students where in some other areas we were seeing less and less engagement um, and um, some poor scores on um, some you know rating scales for social emotional health um, as well as some issues with truancy so um, we wanted to address those things by developing a more formal nature education program and um, when polling some of the teachers in our school, we found that maybe they were a little bit hesitant um, to do that. So we designed our plan with the greenhouse to be both a growing center, as well as um, maybe a little bit more comfortable setting for teachers to start doing some of their learning outside. Um, and then the second part of our plan is to um, develop a database with standards linked um, lesson plans, unit plans, um, instructional programs um, for teachers to access and not feel like there were additional um, burdens on their time, something they could access easily and implement quickly. Um, so we are very excited and so appreciative that this grant opportunity is gonna help us link what we have for an existing program with all the places we wanna go outside. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah and team, uh, the energy that you bring to inspiring students to go outside and learn and, and the engagement really comes from your excitement and energy that you bring to the process. So thank you so much. We're excited to see your developments continue. So thank you very much. Um, I am going to move to Gorham High School um, under the category of outdoor ed. Uh, so the Gorham High School Rev Award will be used to maximize the capacity of the new freshman academy to implement integrated project-based place-based learning in our school and creating a, create a teaching climate that embraces these ideas more broadly throughout the curriculum. The project will use these funds to create outdoor learning spaces, fund field trips for students, and offer students and teachers learning experiences to extend their capacity towards outdoor learning. So I'm thrilled to introduce John Haley uh, from Gorham to hear about their idea. Thanks, Nick. Um, yeah, we're, I'm uh, a teacher came into my room last year and kind of looking around at the, the school and kind of the energy level of students coming back from COVID was like, oh, we have to do something to in, invigorate our, our students and came up with the idea of creating an integrated project based team. And when we heard about the Rev grant, we thought that was an excellent opportunity to uh, take that idea and turn it into uh, an opportunity to get kids outdoors. And so we're hitting that in a few ways. One, we are creating an outdoor, uh, really an outdoor or a laboratory space based around a greenhouse. So we're going to add solar panels uh, and a weather station and just make that an outdoor learning space along with uh, a bunch of outdoor seating, which is something we recognize that uh, was a re real value to to kids is just like taking them outside to get that learning, um, which was a real lesson from COVID. Uh, we also realized that we needed to prepare teachers to do that in, I think it's November, no, December, we're going to have outdoor uh, education training. We're going to have a, comer, a teacher come here and teach us all about uh, what the best practices are for getting kids outdoors. And finally, we're going to take kids on a bunch of field trips. Uh, we have our next field trip planned for uh, the end of next week using the REV funding. And so uh, that's our, our goals. And we're psyched to get out there and use the uh, resources that REV has offered us. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. John, one thing that always stands out to me in working with you on this is the smile on your face gets bigger and bigger as the ideas go. Just your excitement to be like, I can't wait to give these opportunities to students. Really, every time we meet, it's awesome to watch. So congratulations to you and your team. Yeah. Excellent. So we are going to move on to MSAD 61, 
Lake Region Middle School in the category of outdoor education. And here's what, here's what they wrote in their abstract. So the Outdoor Learning Spaces, Spaces Initiative Pilot Project at Lake Region Middle School will inclu include building both a large greenhouse and an outdoor learning pavilion to increase our capacity for outdoor education. The REV award will ensure that both these spaces are ADA accessible so that all of our students can access and benefit from these outdoor learning experiences. The funding will also provide an opportunity for guest presenters to use these spaces to help our middle school students better understand how the topics they are learning relate to real world experiences and careers. So I am gonna pass the mic to Elena Clark from MSAD 61. Hi. Um, well, we are so thrilled to be part of this Rev Award. Um, we're, the biggest thing that we've noticed is that, especially um, since COVID, students come back and are like, when am I ever gonna use this stuff that you're teaching me? Um, and so our big mission with this project was to find ways where they can get hands-on experience that are authentic, that um, maybe introduce them to people who use these same lessons in their careers. Um, and this was just the perfect opportunity. Um, this year, while we're building it, we're planning to have our students help us. They're gonna um, ap apply their math skills to help us design and build our layout of our greenhouse. Um, and we're gonna have them use their language arts skills to help us research and communicate with the guest speakers that they want to meet um, this year. Um, and then beyond that, they're going to be using those spaces as an outdoor learning lab and um, place for science classes and social studies classes and art and everything like that. Um, we're hoping that students in every single grade are going to experience more hands-on interdisciplinary projects. Um, and then we're going to have a set of eighth grade greenhouse leaders who will build their independence by helping us work to maintain our plants um, in the greenhouse and um, help spearhead our greenhouse committee that is focused on sharing our ideas and communicating our successes with the rest of the school. Um, this will also team up with our garden club and some of our other after school clubs to provide fresh and local food to our community. Um, and through this project, we're planning to see an increase in student academic achievement and a decrease in negative behaviors and truancy that we were noticing. Um, so we're super excited to have this opportunity and thank you so much. You're welcome, Elena. And it's so exciting to hear the ways in which you're incorporating students in the whole process from designing and, and carrying it forward and sustaining. So thank you so much. Congratulations. Congratulations. So our next awardee is MSAD 11 Gardner High School with the category of outdoor education. And here's what Gardner uh, provided us. So Gardner Area High School detected an alarming, alarming negative trends in terms of academic growth decreasing, disengagement increasing, and a large increase in social emotional issues. After implementing smaller projects and funds to help reverse these trends, red funding will be used to innovate on these first steps so that now every freshman will spend 75% of their earth science class outdoors, thereby providing a real world context for earth science and their learning. So I am going to pass the mic to Sharon Gallant to hear more. Thanks, Nick. There we go. So yes. maybe we're ready. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm Sharon Gallant from Gardner Area High School and we are also incredibly thrilled to be able to receive uh, this money. We, as noted as Nick said, we're seeing some just alarming results, negative results, and a lot of that coming from COVID. We were at that time looking at how we were going to change our earth science uh, class. And being a main master naturalist, I asked why we couldn't do it outside. Why wasn't earth science taught outside? I know, I know, it's kind of shocking because high school, the only classes that ever really go outside are our wellness teams. So that's really what we're doing. We are spending, um, it, we said in our grant 75% of the time, we've been out probably 95% of the time. Every single one of my kids are outside all the time. Um, we have purchased an all-terrain um, wheelchair so that every student is accessible to wherever we go. We also have purchased clothing so that that isn't an issue. We won't have anyone that due to uh, not having the required outdoor items uh, would be any type of a hindrance. 
we are the student engagement already is phenomenal in this hands on approach. It gives us a chance not only to teach the um, concepts that are required by the main learning results and the uh, next generation science standards, but it also gives us an opportunity to do some experiential opportunities with these kiddos. Once they've taken my class, they then can sign out any of the equipment that we're using and bring it home over the weekend to use with their families as well. And that is like such a draw for our kids that it's just so crazy. So again, just a huge thank you for giving us this opportunity that I've been teaching for almost 30 years and my budget every year is $1,000. And so to get after 30 years to get $100,000 is like, it's just so incredible. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Sharon. Sharon, I'm remembering our last conversation when you said, what am I going to do with all these boxes of stuff? It's all coming in. What are we going to do? Uh, and also, you tell me you're going to mic up students when they're outside, like engaging in these outdoor learning experiences. So congratulations. We're excited to see that and hear more about it. Awesome. Congratulations. Um, I'm going to move next to Limestone Community School with the category of outdoor education. So Limestone Community School will pilot an outdoor education program that is accessible to all middle level students as part of their regular school day. They'll spend much of their time working on relevant place-based projects um, and their curriculum is hyper-local. They'll have a hyper-local focus and will help students find meaning in their learning. So with that, I'm going to pass it to Hogan Marquis and Caroline Reed, and they're gonna tell us more. Hi, I'm Hogan Marquis. Um, it's a beautiful day up here in the county. Um, so I, I don't know if we're the, I think we're the northernmost folks that are presenting today. So when we get on the map, we'll be, we'll be way up there. So I, uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone that brought us all the way here. Uh, I, all of you know that this is a really tough journey to get this far. Uh, there's lots of ups and downs. You've got that initial idea and the energy that that comes at the beginning and then all of that all of that energy that ne is needed to get you across the finish line so much more than that initial part so um my team would like to thank a lot of people we first of all we'd like to thank our kids for being game to get outside and do some some different things and try school in a different way we'd like to thank our administrators at our school uh, we would like to thank nick and elaine and uh Martin Mackey for letting us in early in this process and uh, making us feel like we were worthy. Uh, it's really humbling to be amongst this group of people because a lot of times you feel like your idea isn't an innovation. You feel like maybe my idea isn't as good as all these other ideas. Maybe, maybe what we're doing uh, isn't as good. But I think what, what I have seen today and heard today is that we're all trying to uh, hit that, that same sort of thing. We want our kids to care about what they're doing. We want them to have fun. We want them to get outside more. And our pilot is gonna enable kids to do that. We're gonna use our funds to establish a small garden and farm at our school with a greenhouse and a multi-purpose building that we can use as a farm stand, a sugar shack, maybe a cider house if we can ever get any apples. Uh, we also are going to um, revitalize some trails behind our school to use for recreation, but also as like an outdoor science lab. We're going to build field guides and all kinds of uh, stuff for our kids to use out there for our entire school and our, our larger community. Um, we really want our kids to learn to be leaders in their community and stewards of our beautiful state. I mean, our kids in Maine are built for the outdoors. Everyone is saying that in this meeting, and uh, it's re it's really good to hear that and be amongst and be amongst our people. So our goals are to increase in student engagement, uh, get kids to show up every day. Um, we want to see big improvement in our our big gains in our students' social emotional development, and. Uh, like I said earlier, we want to have the leaders of the future. We want we want to build main kids that will take this all over someday and be our our stewards and our our leaders in the future. So they've got to learn. They've got to learn early to love this stuff. 
or why would they want to stay? So thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Hogan and your team. Hogan, you, you mentioned energy at the beginning, and I know we had that theme of tenacity throughout this process. Hogan is meeting with me from like Tim Hortons, uh, and on the bottom it says Wi-Fi thief. So Hogan is like stealing Wi-Fi from Tim Hortons to get through this process. Then all of a sudden he was in Caribou High School. I, so I just appreciate and admire the energy that you brought to your team and your team to get all the way through the process. And here you are. So congratulations. It was fantastic. Hey, I'm also very proud of Old Town. That's that's my hometown. So go, <laughs> go John, Doty, and your team. Awesome. Thank you. So our next, our next awardee is Maine Academy of Natural Sciences under the category of outdoor education. And here is what they provided from their abstract. Uh, as a project-based learning school rooted in the natural sciences, the Maine Academy of Natural Sciences will be constructing a makerspace barn to engage students in experiential outdoor projects while providing the resources and space to offer a blacksmithing course on campus to all interested students. So with that, I am gonna pass it to Evan Coleman to share more. Hi, Nick. Um, first off, just thank you so much. Um, I got to take this project on with two other science teachers from our high school who are actually out leading field trips right now. Um, but Rand Smith and Jeff Chase, I wanted to give them a shout out. It's been great to be a part of this team. Um, yeah, uh, as, as Nick mentioned, I think we have been waiting for a while to try to build this barn and this grant's made it possible. Um, so we're constructing a makerspace barn um, and the sort of goals with it are twofold. On the one hand, like many people have spoken about, um, we're incredibly excited to have an outdoor classroom where we can have regular daily instruction outdoors and also to really push um, teachers using the natural resources that we have on campus from uh, our greenhouses to our one acre farm in the projects that students are doing. Um, so we're really excited to have student driven projects that are using the natural resources all around us. Um, so that's sort of the first part. Um, the second part for us, as, as Nick mentioned, is um, to develop a blacksmithing program and course on campus. Um, since our founding 10 years ago, uh, we have worked with a local blacksmith who uh, sadly passed away this year. Um, and this grant's giving us an opportunity to offer a blacksmithing program on campus um, and to continue his legacy. Uh, so we're going to be dedicating part of the barn to him and also um, making sure that all students have the chance who are interested to learn about the art of metalworking. Um, so it's, it's an incredibly exciting opportunity. We're also able to keep expanding this barn. This is the foundation we hope to continue to build upon it. Um, but a, just a huge thank you. You know, we weren't sure if this was going to be possible after COVID and after a lot of disengagement and issues with, tr with truancy. And so um, we're incredibly fortunate and excited for, for the years ahead. But um, thanks again to Nick and Elaine and looking forward to hearing more about the rest of these projects. Congratulations, uh, Evan and your team. I know throughout the process, we were talking with Evan and his team about local need and you were telling us about the wait list for students to join the blacksmith or engage with those pieces. And so um, I'm very sorry to hear about the passing of your blacksmith that you're working with and excited that you can expand in his legacy, uh, the opportunity. So congratulations. Our next awardee moving to the Wayfinder schools uh, under the category of multiple pathways. And here's what Wayfinder provided us. The Passages Responsive Education Project, or PREP, is a pilot project of Wayfinder schools. PREP is designed to meet the needs that Maine youth have struggled in traditional school settings and are off track to graduate. PREP will serve court-involved youth in nine Maine counties, York, Cumberland, Sagadahawk, Lincoln, Knox, Waldo, Hancock, Washington and Andres Androscoggin, as well as youth in Ann Hancock County who are not involved in the justice system, but who need a second chance at high school graduation. PrEP will serve students aged 14 to 22, including those who are pregnant or parenting and have faced significant challenges on their road towards high school completion. So Martha Kemp, if you can join us and, and share more about your pilot idea. Thank you so much, Nick. And thank you, Paige. I, I also want to 
do a shout out to Martin Mackey, thanking him for all he did with Rev and getting it going and constantly telling me, why aren't you applying? <laughs> and uh, so we are very excited with this pilot. It is geared towards working with court-involved youth, which we know lag way behind in high school graduation. And our focus is to use three areas that we know help retain and engage youth back in the educational process, which is the arts, outdoor, and career exploration. Um, and we're excited to kind of close our loop uh, by adding Hancock to our area of service. Um, where we provide 24 core skills, life skills, uh, really one-on-one -on -one support in their community. And that is the piece that is the most striking for us is we can follow those students, those who are involved in the justice system, wherever they may have to go. And our focus is to help them graduate closer with their peers. So whatever has taken them down that road doesn't uh, uh, create barriers in the future. And we're so thankful to all of you um, and Rev especially for allowing us to really look at this area and to support these youth. So thank you. Congratulations, Martha and your team. Uh, Martha, just from our last conversation and most of our conversations, one of the key elements of REV is looking at systemic change. And uh, every time we talk, I always I admire and appreciate how much you want to look at the justice system and the education. How can we make all of those work together? So congratulations. We're excited to see the trails that you blaze in those areas. That's our main focus is look at what all those barriers are and see if we can remove them. Yeah. Congratulations, thank you. So next up is Oceanside High School um, in the, with the category of outdoor education. And here is what they provided from their abstract. So this initiative begins with one or more cohorts of eight to 10 high school students from general education, special education and alternative education with specific focus on students who are at risk of dropping out. With direct involvement from multiple educators and other staff, this cohort will meet weekly, working on both social emotional learning and supplementing their academic requirements and standards with hands-on outdoor training and projects, including mostly, including monthly or twice monthly field trips. So these will include trail work from the local watershed program, wilderness first aid training, and junior main guide training, and hiking mountains and other wilderness excursions in all kinds of weather. So Jessica Falconer, take us away. Tell us more about your, your pilot. Um, well, it's in response to, I'm a social worker at the school and uh, I work with the most individually like traumatized students. And, you know, the pandemic is an example of a community trauma and how it disproportionately affects, um, you know, students with individual trauma who are also at most risk of dropping out. So um, our initiative is an attempt to re-engage those students. And I mean, ultimately my hope would be to completely change the public school landscape and that everybody when they came into the school was a part of a cohort that did this. But I've got um, a lot of faculty and staff that I'm inspired by around here and everybody is looking for ways to reconnect, to rebuild trust and create an entirely new landscape. So we feel very grateful and lucky that this is the first step toward that. Congratulations, Jessica. And again, in that theme of tenacity, Jessica rallying her team and getting things going as they were working with students experiencing trauma right, right as they were putting this all together and you know working through all of those pieces. So congratulations, uh, and we appreciate and excited to see what you do with your students. So I am moving to Lawrence High School in the category of multiple pathways. And here is Lawrence's abstract. Lawrence High School has developed an innovation that includes two parts. The first is the establishment of an intensive alternative education program for some of our most struggling students called the Lawrence Education Alternative Program or LEAP. 
And the second is the creation of an interdisciplinary community focused project based learning program CFPBL within the regular high school. So I'm going to ask Sherry Brown um, to come and tell us a little bit more about their pilot idea. Congratulations. Hi, thanks, Nick. We are so excited and we're really excited to be listening to what everybody's been talking about. So we at Lawrence, I'm sitting here with Karen Foster, who's our original rev team, and she is one of our LEAP teachers extraordinaire. And then our principal, Dan Bowers, is also online. Hi, Dan. So that was our original LEAP team. So as Nick said, we are looking at two pathways um, to really re-engage our students who, who we've noticed have really disengaged from this thing we call school. And we wanna rethink everything we do with school. So um, kind of at our two-tier approach for our most struggling students, we've, we've um, created LEAP and Karen has been doing an amazing job with our students um, where they've been, they're designing their space and really thinking about um, interdisciplinary projects and how we get them out into the community in multiple pathways as they look towards what their next steps are after high school. And then we're also you know, leveraging all the funds we can because as we know, we wanna do that. And we, we're bringing um, in partnership with, with uh, Rural Aspirations and Thomas College, we're going to be training our teachers on um, project-based learning and having a pilot team of teachers that are going to get all of the resources that they need and any transportation that they need and training that they need and time that they need to plan to really rethink how they're doing education in their in our school. Congratulations, Sherry and team. I, Sherry, I'm remembering, I got to sit in on the Foster Center, the UMaine Foster Center course, uh, the IMPD course with you and your team. And you sat right in the center of the room, you and your team, and you could feel the energy, you know, as they were like, what is the real problem? You know, and just the creative energy coming out of their, their team. So congratulations. It's awesome to see you here. The, the work's just starting, but it's awesome. We can't wait to see what we can do. It's beautiful. So I am going to move to Madison Elementary School with a category of outdoor education. And here is what they provided. The MES Pathways to Exploration Trail System will increase the physical, social, and emotional health of our students. Rev funding will be used to make our current trail ADA accessible. As a result, all MES students will be able to utilize our trail regardless of mobility issues. Funding will also grant the, us the opportunity to install a dock system onto our wetlands to be used as an outdoor classroom space. Students will be able to use the trail for exercise, assisting our school in supporting healthy lifestyle habits. And I'm thrilled to have Jennifer Swain uh, and Christina Soroy here to tell us more. Hi, I'm Jennifer Swain. I'm a kindergarten teacher here in Madison with um, Christina C. Royce, we work together on this project. Christina is our life skills classroom teacher. Um, several years ago, I started a Woods Wednesday program with my kindergartners and quickly saw from them the value in um, just the holistic value in bringing them outside on Wednesdays to do our learning. And through this grant, we're gonna be able to enhance our trail um, hoping that all of our students in K to four, pre K to four, and our community as well will use this system, um, get outside, get the benefits um, that I'm seeing in kindergarten. Um, and our wood, our wetlands are not currently being used, so our dock will allow us. Um, right now, we're looking at a 16 by 16 foot dock out onto our wetlands that we can use as an outdoor classroom space. So, um, which is exciting for some of our other teachers in the building to have a formal space um, to meet with students instead of what kindergarten typically does is pull up a stump and um, we sit down and we do our learning outside. Some of the other teachers, this is a more formal um, area. So hoping that they will use it um, and see the benefits that we are seeing in kindergarten as well. So and Christina, 
Hi, like Jen said, I'm Christina Seroys. I'm a life skills teacher. Our life skills room has more children than you would imagine are in there. Um, I got to watch as Jen and I shared students how excited, how passionate, and how amazing her program was going, and I wanted in on it too. My students are often non-ambulant, come to me with lots of traumatic challenges, um, perfect pasts, things that have been just challenging for them, and of course they needed this probably more than anybody else. So I wanted a way to get them outside. So Jen and I got together, we brainstormed, and we need to make this ma make that magic happen for my students as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We cannot thank you enough. Congratulations. Uh, I also just want to make a, do a quick shout out and mention to um, Bonnie Levesque, who is here yes. as well. Um, Bonnie, wave to her amidst the, the Zoom <laughs> videos. Um, one of the requirements for uh, Rev Pilots moving forward is that you have teachers and administrators uh, on your team. Um, and I, we are so proud of all of you as life happens in schools. Yeah. Uh, you know, as people, you know, the light of the idea is there and, and just people are coming and going throughout that process. And the three of you really buckled down and made it happen. The iterative process is alive with all of you. There's so many drafts and we, we admire what you brought to it and excited to see it alive as well. So, um, wow, yeah, goosebumps upon goosebumps. It's fabulous to be here, hear from all of you and celebrate all of you and add you to our growing list of, of awardees here. Uh, we're flooding the state. Elaine said that there is, we're flooding the state with Rev and all of these amazing ideas and, um, and actions. So I'm gonna close today with um, the words of Martin Mackey which is changing lives. Uh, and you all are doing it. I'm excited to see your ideas do that, your actions do that, um, and the experiences that you've created for your students do that. So keep on changing lives uh, and we'll keep moving forward. Welcome, congratulations, it's beautiful. And Paige and Elaine, are we open it to questions or comments? Or I know we're coming right up on noontime, but exclamations of joy or relief uh, for some of us. You've done such a great job. Um, that might be a Rachel or Marcus question, but I would just, I guess, second everything that Nick just said. Thank you all so much. This is super exciting. And, um, you know, we're, I, I think I can speak for the whole Rev team here at DOE that we feel very lucky to be able to work with such innovative thinkers. Um, leading the way on this stuff out, out in the field of education in Maine. So thank you all. Yes, I want to second that. And I apologize for a very raspy voice, um, but you all are doing a fantastic job and the work that you've put into creating these pilots has been phenomenal. And we can't be any more proud of the group that's going through than you all right now. So thanks for all of your efforts and congratulations.